Andrew was back at Stanford. He was doing a biomedical informatics program. Uh, and in the context of one of the classes, the class was discover something new using all these data sets. And so for him, coming from this large scale computation background, uh, he really thought about the problem in a very different way than some of the other students who are, say, medical doctors um, and hadn't done computer science before. And so he thought about how can I discover a drug to treat a disease? And how can I take all this radically different information and pull it together into one algorithm that can produce a result that actually translates to the real world? And so while he was doing that, he did that for type 2 diabetes um, and took data sets including biological, chemical, and clinical uh, and produced a model that actually predicted which drugs would work and which drugs wouldn't work. Uh, and lo and behold, the drugs that came up at the top of that list that were prioritized very high were drugs like metformin and variations of insulin. So drugs that we know today treat type 2 diabetes. So a few months back, we were working on Parkinson's disease, and we pulled a lot of Parkinson's data uh, into our system. And actually, from what we understand, it's probably some of the most Parkinson's data that's ever been processed in any system like this uh, together at the same time. Uh, and from there, you know, literally it takes minutes to produce results. So we have candidates that we think are interesting. Uh, but given that we weren't Parkinson's experts at the time, we started Googling those results. Uh, we actually found out that one of our top candidates was uh, under study at an NIH Parkinson's Research Center in Michigan. Uh, so we actually put together kind of a report of all the results that, that our algorithms had identified. Uh, and we sent that to the lead PI there, uh, Tim Collier. And uh, the next day he said, shoots us an email and says, how do you guys come up with this? Actually, first he asked two Andrew Radins. <laughs> Second of all, how did you come up with this, these results? Like, these results match exactly what we've been doing in the lab for this drug. Like, can you do another one? And so he said, yeah, sure. So he sends us over um, another drug compound that he's working on. Uh, we run it through our system, and later that afternoon, we send back the results. And this time, he calls back again. He has more people from his lab there, and he's like, all right, you know, tell me a little bit more about how you're actually doing this. Um, because again, it matched all the results he had come up with in the lab. He then gave us a third one. It turns out, uh, we didn't know at the time, but it was actually a test. So it was one that he thought was low probability and he wanted to see what did these guys come up with. Uh, and we come back and we produce results and we say, you know, this drug's not ranking so high. Like, I'm sure there's reasons why you're researching it, but you know, it, we don't think that there's a super strong reason, but here's the information anyway. And he says, great, that, that matches kind of our results that we've seen thus far. Um, and so he was just super excited about this. And actually, Andrew went back and visited him in Michigan a couple weeks ago. Uh, and got to explore his lab, and his lab is, is, is beautiful. Like, it's got um, sparkling glass and chrome and uh, robotic pipettes and just top of the line Parkinson's research facility. And he's been working on Parkinson's for, for 30 years, and um, it's just really exciting that a couple guys who started in a tool shed could kind of get to uh, the same level and, and be able to collaborate with him. And so now we're actually in a, in a collaboration where he's running some studies, some animal studies for us, demonstrate efficacy of some of the compounds we've identified, and we're providing with him with information as well. So one of the interesting things, and actually I recently wrote a blog post on this, is the convergence of the data sciences and the life sciences. Like, we've seen, we've seen the data sciences change many different industries, manufacturing, shipping, um, shopping, anything on the internet. Like, there's algorithms powering all of these things, all of these results but it's only barely touched the life sciences. And I think it's more interesting as, as new companies like ours crop up uh, and pharma companies um, start, as pharma companies start to uh, embrace this. Actually, in my, in my blog post, I talk a little bit about, uh, I, I pull a few quotes from, from companies like, like Sanofi that basically have said, look, we, we, we're learning about the data sciences, we're excited to embrace it, um, and they're actually out there talking to companies uh, to make that happen.